got it. We are here. We are back again. How you doing, mate? Nothing but good. <laughs> well, um, I'm a little bit tired as well, but I'm I'm also a little bit tired of um certain things that keep being claimed. And um well, well we, we we've proven uh what we set out to prove in the first year. There's no obligation to pay tax. We've got them admitting there's no contract, you don't need consent. It's a demand, and if you don't comply with our demand, we'll take from you whatever we want. Bang. And I think it's been a good learning experience, and I think people should continue with the challenge because that way they can really start to see for themselves the absurdity of what's going on. Absolute insanity. Now, we, we've we had um, a little video uh, pop up um, from our friend, uh, our, our friend, Yeah. And um, now we, we have said, actually, a week ago today, um, mm. it'd be really, really nice if we can actually have a discussion with him. Um, you know. It won't happen. Well, no, I know. But, we, you know, we can, like we've done it for the last 12 months, we can only try. Yeah. We can only ask. Um, yeah, yeah. But, he's, but he's made this video and uh, he's made he's made some claims again hasn't he mark um, yeah so i think it, i mean the thing is with what he's doing there he's basically uh fraudulently misrepresenting i mean there are a number of comments i put on in the past drawing his attention to the legislative i.e legal when he's talking about legislation yeah definition of the word law is a people's birthright yeah so it's got absolutely no excuse to continue fraudulently misleading people to say legislation is law. It's, it's completely so, reckless. Reckless. Um, and that, why don't you show everybody the uh, what you showed me a yeah. second ago? And, yeah, I mean, uh, basically... It's in black and white, mate, you know, at the end of the day, this this particular part, so... Okay, so what are, Brian and I were talking about earlier is actually what are uh, his obligations. So this is the bar standard board. And he claims to be a barrister, and I've no reason not to believe that. No. Um, so basically, by his free will, he's chosen to bind himself to uh, this, this, these standards. Well, you don't mean he's got an obligation to it. He has an obligation under oh. these. Okay. Oh, he must have agreed to that then. Yeah, absolutely. It's the only way um. rights and obligations can be created. So when you scroll down, and I'm just going to take you to the ethical ones. Okay, behaving ethically. Okay, so this now has got nothing to do with dealing with clients or anything like this. This is a general uh, undertaking. You must not do anything which could reasonably be seen by the public to undermine your honesty, integrity, and independence. Wow. Okay? Yeah. So, um, point uh, one here is you must not knowingly or recklessly mislead or attempt to mislead anyone. So, uh, if we just change the screen to what you pointed out earlier. Yeah. Uh, do you want to just take people there and just show them? What a disclaimer. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Right, you got that? Yep, got it. This is his video. There we go. And down here, we've got his disclaimer. Uh, neither this nor any other video may be taken as legal advice. I accept no liability whatever for any reliance placed upon it. And as there is no contract between us, and I uh, am not instructed by you. Now, interesting that again, he's using the word contract. Yeah. I mean, join them. Between us. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so basically, whether there's a contract or not, if I just share my screen again. Yeah. Okay. He has an obligation. Uh, not to bring the legal profession basically into dis disrepute. Absolutely. Okay, and he must not knowingly or recklessly mislead or attempt to mislead anyone. Yeah. So, 
Um, basically, if we just go through his video a few places, I suppose, um, and just uh, what we've done is we've uh, sort of made a summary of what his claims are and what he's doing. And basically, I just want to take you to uh, two minutes and 50 into the video. The reason why we're doing this, uh, just to point out to people, is I think it's, uh, well, we think it's like extremely important now that we really get to the, 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 the bottom of this whole argument or concept or whatever you want to yeah, call it. Absolutely. We seem to have one side saying one thing and one side saying the other. Um, and we are the other. Incompatible. <laughs> and we are the other. We keep seem to be pointing out the evidence, but we don't seem to be getting the evidence from the other side to rebut it. We just keep getting opinions. Correct. And unsubstantiated opinions as well. Yeah. So and, and basically, definitely, this is recklessly misleading because he has been put with the knowledge before. Even so, though yeah. he deleted the comments where, yeah. you know, when he tried to uh, pull us apart. Yeah. Uh, I mean, firstly, I, you know, I mean, I don't really think that this person in the video, anybody that sees that, would be taken seriously. But uh, if we go to two minutes fifty, acts are not law. Acts are not law. This is another one of the common misconceptions that plagues the internet and circulates both YouTube, TikTok, and wherever else. This notion that acts are not law. I'm not sure what. Certain people think they are if they're not law, because they are law. It's primary legislation enacted by the Westminster Parliament as the supreme lawmaking body of this country. So I'm not sure what they think Acts of Parliament are if they're not law, but they most certainly are law. But let's leave that point here for now and continue watching. OK, so what's interesting with that, OK, uh, he's made a number of statements Acts are not law because legislation is law and parliament is the supreme lawmaking body. Yeah. So uh, we've done this many times before and taken people through it, but let's just do it again here. Please do. Uh, sorry? Yeah, please do. Sorry. I'm away from the mic. Uh, okay. So basically what we'll do is start with the... Um, Council tax, um, sorry, tax administration and enforcement regulations, nineteen ninety two. Okay, so let me pull this up on the screen. Okay. So what <clears throat> what he's saying is this is law. <clears throat> All right. Uh, yes. It, and the reason he believes it to be law, let me share my screen, uh, is as follows. So his rationality is as follows. So what he's doing is saying, okay, this is regulations, and we can see it's a statutory instrument. Okay, so primary legislation, it's not that. This here is a secondary legislation, and it's a UK statutory instrument. Okay, so to find out where this document gets its authority from, we just click on the introductory text, and it tells us here, it gets all of its authority under all of these different parts of the Local Government Finance Act 1992. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing is, let's go there. Copy and paste. Search for that. Like the Government Finance Act 1992. So he's saying this says law. I'm sorry, that word says act. It doesn't say law. Every time I read it, it says ACT, act. Act. Okay, it's an act. If it was law, it would quite simply say local government finance law 1992. Yeah. Okay, now when we go to the introductory text of that, yeah. Okay, it tell, tells us, be it enacted by the Queen's Most Excellent Majesty, by and with the advice and consent of Lord Spiritual and Temple, and the Commons in this present Parliament assembled, and by authority of the same. Okay, so basically, 
to find out who these are, we need to uh, go to the um, go back in time to 1688, because essentially what happened was the divine right of kings ended. Yeah, and people need to understand the significance of. It. So here they declared the two houses of parliament. Okay. So yeah. you have the one house, the Lord spiritual and temporal. Yeah. And the other house is the commons. Yeah. Okay. And the reason it says by authority of the same, <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> here <clears throat> is because they did this act themselves, the people that created this document. And actually, this document is not an act of William and Mary. This predates William and Mary. <clears throat> so what it says is, and as if they had been summoned according to the usual form. So what they're saying is, we did this ourselves in the same format that it used to be done when we had the divine rights of kings. <laughs> so instead of the king calling parliament, we've done it ourselves. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And and so it says here, the, these people themselves, you know, hereby declared, enacted, and adjudged to all tents, intense constructions and purposes whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So purely self-declared. Uh, authority, yeah, and they've even told you, notwithstanding basically what anybody else thinks, yeah, okay. So they've done this all on their own. So just here, the claim. Here's it's just which is perfectly lawful. I mean, we can do it. Anybody can. Oh do yeah, it. we can do it. Anybody can do it. This is the thing. <clears throat> so basically, there we've got the uh, creation of the fiction, uh, uh, which gives the finance act the authority in regards to the Lord spiritual temple and the commons. Yeah. Okay. The monarch, which was Elizabeth at the time, uh, that there is created, that fiction of law is created in the Bill of Rights. So we just go to the Bill of Rights. Okay. And in the beginning it says here, okay, their majesties, okay, then called and known by the names and styles of William and Mary, Prince and Princess of Orange. Okay. So that there's the creation of the monarch. And the reason that's the creation of the monarch is when they accepted the crown, basically, it goes on and talks in the acceptance. So these are the conditions that were accepted with this contract. Okay. Because it was an offer. Yeah. And acceptance. Yeah. And um, and it goes on here to say basically that all that will govern the successes. Yeah. You know, and their successes, et cetera, et cetera, in a number of places. Okay. So now we know who the con who the parties are here. Yeah. Okay. Bill of Rights creates the monarch, Lord Spiritual Temple and the Commons that is created by the first act of William and Mary. And therefore, we understand, hopefully people understand what my authority of the same means. Yeah. Okay. So when, when we go back to the Bill of Rights, okay, what authority did they have? The Lord's spiritual and temporal and the commons assembled. Okay. They claim to lawfully, fully and freely represent the states of the people of this realm. Yeah. Okay. So the relationship, again, is very, very simple and very clear. Mm -hmm. Okay? The people are represented by Parliament. Therefore, by impossibility, Parliament cannot be the supreme lawmaker. The people <laughs> must be. <laughs> it's complicated, this what, 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 what I want to know is, from, from... Right? Is I want to rebut this. Well, let, let's even look at the... Great absurd. Come and rebut the information. Show us if we've got it wrong. We want yep. to know. And do you know what, Mark? There's, there's there's a lot of people out there that want to know. Of course, everybody wants to know. I mean, we. I mean, this is this is obvious to us. Yeah. But if he if he believes that he's got something that he can bring to the table, bring it to the bloody table, mate. For God's sake. 
Yeah, and so it gets even worse is irrationality. Yeah. Okay, because the act of settlement is an act of the old English parliament. Yeah. Okay, so what he's saying is this is supreme. Yeah. And when we scroll down to section four in this, <laughs> okay, so this is his supreme lawmaker yeah. saying laws, and whereas the laws of England are the birthright of the people thereof. Just, just zoom into that. Just All kings and queens who shall ascend to the throne and realm ought to administer the government to, of the same according to the said laws and all the officers and ministers who ought to serve them respectively according to the same. So there's an absolute comprehension problem here. Just bring that a little bit larger, that screen, Mark. Yeah. I just want people to bloody see this because it's one thing saying something and it's another sh showing the evidence, right? Yeah. Right. So, so, the laws uh, of England are the birthright of the people. I can't, and, and that the, is it. Like I say, also the insanity of it. Okay. It's, I mean, it's he not our saying, opinion. Prim, he's saying primary legislation prevails. Okay, and yeah. in primary legislation, it defines law. It's just beyond belief. The irrationality. So. Basically, you know, this is the problem with face. Nobody, there's a serious comprehension problem about this. The this, this problem is so huge. It's massive. Right? It's so huge. It's incomprehensible for most, uh, a lot of people yeah. to understand it, right? But what's happening is that we, with the help of Mark, because I'm not saying I'm clever. At all? No, I'm not clever either. I, mean, I, I can know. read the. Uh, 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 okay, uh, right. So, so we can read, right? So, what we're saying is that we found some information, and we're putting you people, or or, or the councils and the judiciary, and we're putting you with this information, and you're blatantly ignoring it. Yeah. Now, now this right? is what happens now with that, Brian. Okay, is that. Uh, once you with them, you can always turn around and say, honest mistake, sorry, I'm wrong. Okay. No, no. But once you with the knowledge, you no longer can claim honest mistake. Benefit of the doubt, gone. Okay. And she this said. is what should create an equitable estoppel. Yeah. Because you follow what you believe is right. And, to, and then if somebody comes with better knowledge, if you don't take into account that knowledge, you now are acting negligently if you choose to continue. Yeah. You can always stop and say, oops, sorry, honest mistake. And put your hands up, yeah. Go yeah. clean. Exactly. You've got clean hands. Actually. Clean hands. Yeah. Simple. So, so basically, uh, we put him with the knowledge before. Yeah. Okay. And back to the bar stand we born, he is knowingly misleading the public. Basically, he, by continuing to tell people legislation is law, where legislation itself defines law as something different, your birthright, that's a fraudulent misrepresentation that he's doing. He's perpetrating fraud on the people. There's no way. And then he turns around and says, oh, this is not legal or lawful advice. Go and get professional advice. He's marketing himself as... Yeah. That's insane. Well, I I can't believe with the amount of years of training that he's had uh, that he can't understand this. Well, rationally, I can't understand how nobody understands this in the legal profession, including the judiciary and the whole lot. But we'll be bringing out some more videos on the uh, uh, parliamentary sovereignty. Well, the only, uh, the only rational thing I can come up with, Mark, is they do know <laughs> and they don't want us to, and they don't want to admit it. And no, I honestly think they just don't know. I, I mean, <laughs> the, the cognitive dissonance, there's something missing here. All right, we'll leave, we'll leave it open. We'll leave it open. <laughs> All right. So, what else have we got? Um, no, I mean, I don't know if it's really worth going in detail, but I mean, just quickly going through the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, just to summarise. Now, I've shown you the fictions of law are created. Now, law only deals with reality. It doesn't deal with fiction. No. And, and quoting you, you know, and, and it's what it says on the tin. 
You get yeah, yeah. Lo local government finance act. It doesn't say local government law, finance law. Okay. Well, apparently it, it, it creates an obligation for us as well, but but again, just show me the act of parliament that does it, because it's not there. I've I haven't found it. If somebody's got it, show it to me. Yeah. You, you know, it's irrational. So basically, then it's interesting his comment at uh, five minute fifty. Uh, about slavery, where the girl talks about slavery. Wow. Now, uh, basically, uh, okay, I suppose maybe it's not directly with the definition of slavery if you immediately look at it. However, it's definitely theft, extortion, and many other unlawful things, blackmail and all the rest, threats of violence, actual you, violence. You've got it on the screen. Uh, no, uh, but basically... Uh, what they're doing is they are forcing you into labor. How else do you make money? <laughs> it's, 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 How else do you make money? I mean, I it's complicated. I, um, said, I said this on the council once about eight, nine years ago, and I said to him, well, is it is it by force? And he said, well, you don't have to pay it. I said, well, what will happen if I don't pay it then? He said, well, summon you and take you to court. I said, well, that's by force then, isn't it? So it must be slavery. No, no it's not slavery. So, so, oh, so, uh, what that's insane. So, so, let's go to the Justice's Clark Society's Council Tax Enforcement. Okay, in here, they fully describe an, an unlawful administrative court. Okay, but when you get down to the uh, section, where is it? And it's fine, eh? uh, and let's make this bigger. Okay, now I'm sorry, this tells you everything you need to. Okay, so this is in section four. Okay, that there tells you all you need to know. Because at the end of the day, if you've got no money and uh, or whatever, uh, they are threatening you. If you don't comply, okay, <laughs> they will chuck you into jail. Yeah, and mate. Leave your liberty. Yeah. So, but worse than that, Brian, it set tells you the power to commit to prison is coercive. It's intended to be used to extract payment from those who are able to pay, but not to punish the debtor. Hang on. <gasps> Sorry, if you're claiming I'm a debtor, <laughs> you're telling me that you're using this threat coercively to extract money from me. You can't make it up, can you? You can't make this up. Okay. Wow. I mean, it's so it's just you know, but basically we've got all the evidence now, and so now it's about moving it into the next step. And I mean, also there, it's interesting at nine minutes where he says, "Uh, oh, sorry, at eight minutes thirty, basically the local government act." Uh, he claims it proves an obligation. It actually doesn't. Well, it tells you. Yeah, but he keeps. Yeah. They all keep pointing and saying the local government finance yeah. act, but they don't. They don't go any further into it. Yeah, no, How but does it, it create it. It does not prove any obligation. It's unreal. It tells you, it expresses. It's a demand. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> and if you don't comply with my demand, yeah, this is how I'm going to take from you what I want. Yeah. Okay. There's nothing lawful about that. I mean, recently we've had a barrister um, actually write. We told us, didn't we? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A barrister, barrister told us it's not a demand. It's not a debt. It's, it's, it's a demand, sorry. It. It's a demand. We take from you what we want. It's not a debt. So they are actually getting very brazen in over the last year. Well, they have to. About it. Because people now are asking, hang on, is this right? Well, they have to tell us the truth that it is a demand, yeah, yeah? yeah. and payment is by force. Yeah whether you like it or not, not because someone's forcing themselves on whatever the, the <laughs> said, yeah. right? It's an act of force, man. Absolutely. Prove nothing. it's not. Yeah. And and then basically you can see how it tries to sway the argument into the emotional blackmail at the end. Yeah. Okay, where what it's saying is basically, well, other people pay so you should pay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <insane. laughs> We never said, well, we never said not, we're not, we don't want to pay. 
right? We, we, want resolve, obliged to pay. we want to resolve the obligation. It can't be created by anybody, not anybody in Parliament. Nobody. No obligation be, can be created. We haven't harmed anybody. We haven't stood on anybody's rights. Yeah. We haven't harmed, you know. I mean, come on, man. Let's get it. Let's get this sorted once and for all. Because there's a growing number of people that are realizing the bloody truth, right? It's as simple yeah, as that. But we've got to try and avoid uh, violence. We don't want violence. Of course, we don't. Yeah. Okay. So um, let me just see if I can find this. This one. I think, Mark. I think. Uh, has got an obligation to... I know, uh, he needs to, everywhere he's, where he's used the word, he needs to go through all of his videos now and correct it. This is, well, he's got an obligation to... Yeah. I think he's got an obligation. If he doesn't come on and discuss it with us, yeah. he's got the obligation to correct himself in public he must, in on public. his YouTube channel. All of it. All of it everything that Enough. he does. Or stay quiet. Don't keep saying yeah. stuff that's not true. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. So let me just share the screen again. Okay. So so this is from Halsbury's Law. Okay. Definition and scope of constitutional law. So when you scroll down here, although there's no written constitution, there are identifiable acts of parliament of major constitutional significance. Okay. Don't worry, you know, what does constitutional mean? Constitutional means something is being constituted. It's the creation. Mm, yeah, creation of, yeah. So some of these are of great importance, such as Magna Carta 1215. And the reason for the importance is the idea of limited government. So did you say limited government? Yeah, limited government. <laughs> I can't, but, but, it, but it gets even worse, okay? Yeah. <laughs> the Bill of Rights, 1688, yeah. asserting the supremacy of Parliament over the royal prerogative. Yes. Not the people. No. What is wrong with these people? Okay, now now this is from Halsbury's, and this is apparently, you know, the Bible of it all, okay? Yeah. And, and then what it goes on to then talks about the Act of Settlement. It doesn't put in here that it defines law as your birthright, but it's about judicial independence, okay? So the real problem we have is people just pick and choose whatever they want. They're doing what they want, Mark, right? Yeah. Whatever suits and fits at the time. And yeah. therefore, it's the people that need to say, stop it, enough's enough. Well, we are, We're, we've had enough. Correct. There's and a growing remember, number of us. Remember the... Enough. Coronation Oath Act, which is part of the Bill of Rights because it's directly referred to in the Bill of Rights. And the first promise of the monarch is to govern us according to our respective laws. And we've got very good law. Yeah. And customs. Yeah. We only need to change our customs. Yeah. That's all that it's about. And interestingly enough, I was speaking to another barrister. Uh, we're finally getting some barristers who are talking to us um, and uh, so he agrees with me with something else as well uh, uh, and this comes down to what are um, uh, acts of parliament for what's the constraint of them okay so he says there uh, he's talking about saying, oh, they're the supreme lawmakers. They're not. Okay. And again, the independence of the judiciary, okay, comes in with this. So to govern the people, according to statutes that Parliament agreed on, therefore, this expressly tells you what statutes are there for to govern the people according to the laws and customs of the same the same being the peoples. This is well expressed at the time of the intent, as well as was clarified to take out any ambiguity with um, Elizabeth's uh, coronation oath, where she said she will govern according to the people's respective laws and customs. 
Now, the independent courts, so in the Bill of Rights, you've got the creation of the independent courts. Do you see the word statutes in there at all? I can't see anything. You haven't shared the screen, actually. Oh, bugger. <laughs> Go on, just, just quickly do it, and then um, we'll carry on. Yeah, okay. We'll finish in a minute. But, um, but yeah, I, it's... It... So, the, so the Coronation Oath Act, basically... Uh, what the first promise is, will you solemnly promise to swear to govern, okay, the people according to statutes in Parliament agreed on? Therefore, this expressly tells you the constraint on the authority of Parliament in regards governance, okay? And governance doesn't mean they can tell us what to do. No, 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 because I, they swear to govern the people according to our laws and customs. Yeah. Okay. And the second promise is, will you to your power cause law and justice and mercy to be executed in all your judgments? Yeah. It does not contain any right for Parliament to interfere with the independent judiciary, which is created by the second promise. It's expressed here. Statutes yeah. in Parliament agreed on. Very clear. Very clear. Okay. So this is where the independent judiciary is created. Yeah. So like I say, we've got excellent setup. I mean, the guys that did that really uh, did a brilliant job. It's an incredible document. I'm not surprised they don't want to bind themselves to it because basically this puts <laughs> all the power to the people. It's simple. <laughs> And it's got nothing to do with voting or democracy. No, I don't know why these people say this. Uh, mm. Well, it's a repeatable thing, isn't it? Someone yeah. said it once and it gets repeated. It's yeah. just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, we are the principle at the end of the day, right? Sure. Whether these people like it or not, right? And, and it's so damned obvious. I mean, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to understand this. Yeah. Right? Um, and uh, we've got um, a, a bunch of people that have inverted it and they're trying to tell us what to do. And just one last piece as well, which uh, I haven't spoken about before. Frequent parliaments, okay? I.e., what is the function of parliament? Right. Okay? For redress of all grievances and for amending, strengthening and preserving the laws. Okay, it doesn't say that they can create whatever they want. They can only amend for strengthening and preserving. That's it. Amazing. Uh, this whole thing, people need to really wake up to it. But the courts are in. The courts need to uh, be held to account. Yeah. The contract with the people is simply the oaths, affirmations, and attestations, and all of those are according to law. And Parliament and the royal prerogative agreed law is your birthright, my birthright, everybody's birthright. Yeah. That is the limit of what they can do. Yeah. And of. And please, I mean, if you think you've got the answers, show me the piece of legislation that says that Parliament can impose its will on anybody it likes. Well, like I always say, mate, uh, you know, when people make these claims, if you're so confident, it'll be really easy for you to provide it. Correct. Really easy. Yeah. And and the irrationality even of it is some of them are relying on Cheney versus whatever, uh, where they're relying on a court judgment. Okay. So they're relying on the kiddie telling mommy and daddy that mommy and daddy are the boss. Yeah. And that's the authority that they're claiming. Wow. Insane. Anyway, yeah. uh, more and more people are asking the right questions, and it's definitely uh, moving in the right direction. And people should carry on with the knock-knock challenge. Like I say, for a number of reasons, it just increases the body of evidence. And... Uh, that day, when you experience the injustice of it, yeah, that day is what creates the motivation to move this whole thing forward. Uh, and at the end of the day, you can experience the whole thing, and it's going to cost you, you know, somewhere between eighty and one hundred and twenty quid. 
yeah. What you learn over the year of doing it and the experience in the course is invaluable. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I just should we just finish on uh, how much we've got on the old. Uh... Uh, on. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, you you posted our rebuttal to his. Oh, that no, I was going to say something else, but yes. Um, I just want to update something very quickly. Yeah. I was talking about what we did last Saturday, Mark, actually. Yeah. How much money have we raised so far? Uh, Harris reckons he knows it all. Well, let's... There's For five not, minutes, he just needs to give us a document or two and, you know... There's a little offer going on here, if he hasn't already seen it. I'm sure uh, he, knows, but he knows that he can't win it. Wow, well, he, he, you know... What are we up to? 10,685 smackerunos, right? For one document. There's the moolah. Send it to us. Right. It, there's the challenge. Very, very simple, very basic, right? Get yourself. Here's all the pledges, right? They're all there, mate. They're all pledges, real pledges, right? And all you have to do is put your name in your email address, choose the file, upload, bang, have it over, and we'll go from there. Really? Um, quite easy uh, to be uh, to be honest. Are you, do you want to finish on the uh, the other one then on, on the um, what we've posted on on his channel, um, or not? Well, apparently, uh, well, we've recorded it to show that it's actually a post that's been put onto um, channel. Yeah. Um. So you've got it here with yours, okay? There you go. Right. So this is basically putting him with the knowledge of what we've just been through. Yeah. Okay. Now, what's interesting, if you just scroll up, okay, uh, so if you sort by the newest first, okay, your comment's there. Yeah. So now if I do the same, so let me, if you just stop sharing, Uh, one okay, so YouTube okay, so I'm going to share the screen. So if I share the screen now, okay, your comment in here. Just so, just so uh, sort. Sort, sort by, just so people, yeah, the comment doesn't seem to exist. Thought, your comment doesn't appear. Okay. So, yeah. So, somehow there's something interesting going on. If anybody knows what that is, <coughs> please let us know. Well, I have no idea. Um, uh, and normally I can suss these things out, but. Yeah, but if you post but, the. We've shown here on this one the vid your comments there. Yeah. So if it disappears, it's uh <laughs> we know. We know. But he's with the knowledge now. And he can't deny being put with the knowledge. Uh and uh so really he needs to hold his hands up because if he's relying on legislation by saying legislation's law. That there is a fraudulent misrepresentation as proven by the uh, Act of Settlement 1700, where legislation itself defines law as your birthright. He's got to stop using the two terms interchangeably. It's very clear. So if he continues with stuff like this, he is actually not only breaching his ethical uh, obligations, uh, uh, he is actually committing fraud. So <laughs> hopefully he changes his ways, and uh, because we're not going to resolve this peaceably uh, unless we start to apply rationality, and there's definitely no rationality being applied. But he's not going to change it. He's not going to change. Definitely not. Well, well, unfortunately, I mean, he's making money out of it. It's all part of his. Uh, you know, money making, ego, materialistic presence. 
uh, as opposed to doing what he knows inside is right. Because yeah. Because he knows, uh, as does every other legal professional. Yeah. Presented with this evidence, it's indisputable because we're using what they're relying on to prove that they're wrong. Yeah. So it's it, it just, I mean, I, I don't know, is there a serious comprehension problem? I don't know. There is, is a serious disconnect, disconnect comprehension, like uh, like the words don't exist. I can't yeah, yeah, see the words. Yeah, yeah. A blindness, something. I don't know. Or a sickness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, not being funny. Well, um, that's okay. another wonderful episode of who can prove any any obligation. <laughs> yeah, so that the fails big style. Well, hey, mate, you're not who, getting any of this money because you're that's a bollocks. Who can force anybody what to do on the earth? Nobody. Cheers, mate. Okay. Take care. Catch you later. See ya.